This screencast is a brief review of Dijkstra's single source shortest path algorithm. <clears throat> Recall the idea of this algorithm is to, given a source vertex, a start vertex, find the shortest path from that vertex to all the other vertices in the connected component of the graph that the start vertex is in. So the key thing here is at each step, it's an iterative algorithm, at each step it will find the vertex that is the closest of all the vertices that it hasn't found yet. So it keeps track of the ones that it's found and it hasn't found. And as it finds the next closest vertex to the start vertex, it eliminates that from the priority queue that's keeping track of all this and then updates the distances based on um, the adjacency list of the vertex. So you can see that that's in this part of the code down here. If the new distance is less than or equal to the uh, vertex, the distance um, that's previously been stored for that vertex from the start, then it updates things. Now, what does it update? It update it keeps track of the distance, and it also keeps track of how what the last edge in the path to that vertex would be, given the um, existing shortest paths. So you'll see that in the example. The vast majority of the screencast is really just going over an example. So you really need to um, have a fairly good understanding of Dijkstra's algorithm, how this algorithm works, uh, before you watch the rest of the screencast. But again, the idea, the simple idea here is, while you have vertices that you haven't visited, so that means this priority queue is not empty, then what you do is you find the next closest one to the start this vertex, that's this, takes the min off the priority queue, and then depending on, as it traverses the adjacency list, that's this get connections part, it will compute the new distance if you use the uh, current vertex shortest path um, to the adjacent vertices, and if it's better than what they currently have, it updates those. So let's get started with the example. So here's the graph. It's a connected graph. Uh, it has six vertices. The uh, distances are on the, uh, labeled on the graph. Um, we start out here, just to remind you, we're going to use an adjacency list representation. You'll use this to just follow along. But it, in the adjacency list are stored the uh, adjacent vertex and the distance. So A's adjacency list has B um, two away and C three away. B's adjacency list, A's two away, C's three away, and D is three away. These edges here. Notice this is uh, an, the undirected graph representation. This also works for directed graphs. Okay, so let's get going here. We've got our graph. And we've got our adjacency list. So we're going to initialize our priority queue. We have A is zero away from itself. And we don't need to worry about how it gets back to itself. And then all the other vertices, uh, we don't know how what, it's, what their distances are. Um, we haven't looked yet. And we don't know how they're going to get back to A. In other words, what the edge is that they're going to use get, to get back to A. We're going to keep track of the edge, that's this previous field. We're going to keep back track of the edge that gets, gets us back towards A, and then we'll be able to, at the end of the algorithm, we'll be able to reconstruct what the path is. So at this point, we know that A is the closest vertex. It's a known shortest path. So we'll remove A, and then we have to update the distances. So to update the distances, we're going to traverse the adjacency list of A, and, which basically means we're going to use these edges and calculate a tentative shortest path to B and to C. And you can see that here. We, that's that final loop in the uh, code that we looked at previously. So now B is going to get a distance, will be a distance 2 away from the source, and it will connect directly to A. And C will be a distance 6 away from A, again, and we'll connect directly to A. We don't ha have any way to update these distances for D, E, and K. 
So the next step will be to remove B since it's closest A, and in fact we know that that's going to be the shortest uh, path back. It won't need to be updated anymore. And then we're going to update those distances. That'll be on the next slide. Okay, so as where we left off the last slide, this is the state, state of the priority queue. Uh, we remove B, okay? So then B will now become the set of vertices for whom we know the shortest paths. And then we have to update. So to update, we're going to have to traverse B's adjacency list here. And we're going to ignore the entries on the adjacency list for which we know the shortest paths. So we're going to ignore A. Um, so what we need to do, we look at C3. And when we look at C3, um, from B, okay, we compute the value of the shortest path to B, that's 2, we know that, we have that stored in the priority queue, I mean, I'm sorry, in the set of known vertices, and then we add the distance on this edge, that's 3, and so we get 5, and 5 is less than 6. So we update the priority queue, we decrease the distance on C down to 5, and most importantly, we say that C is going to use, has to go back to B, and then use that shortest path from B to get back to A. And that's where that 5 comes from. Uh, D is a little bit easier to think about. D um, has no way to get back to A at this point. Um, but now, once we look at um, B's adjacency list, there's an edge from B to D. Okay, and we know we can get from A to B in 2. We add the distance of that edge 3. That gives us 5. So we update D. It's now 5 away from A. And it gets there by connecting to B. And that exhausts B's adjacency list. Okay, so now we look at, here's our new priority queue. The, uh, there's a tie, actually, um, just for... Convention will break the tie by taking the one with the that comes first in um, alphabetic order. So we'll remove C. We'll put C in our set of vertices for which we know the shortest paths. And then we have to update the distances. So we're here with C, and you can see C's adjacency list, but we'll just look over here. We don't have to worry about A, because A, we know the shortest path for A. We don't have to worry about B, we know the shortest path for B. We only need to worry about updating D's distance, so let's look at that. The distance from A to C is 5, and then we add on this edge 4, that distance, so that'll give us 9. And we look, and we look and see D's current distance is 5, okay? Now, to go through C, it would be 9, so we don't update this. This still remains uh, D, 5, use B to get back to A. Um, e, on the other hand, um, is, has, is a distance of infinity at this point, and so we need to update that. And so its distance is going to be the distance from A to C, that's 5 plus 8. That's going to be 13. And E will attach back to its shortest path by C. And so that gives you this. Okay? And then we still don't have anything on the adjacency list that gets us to K. Okay. So now, again, we look at the priority queue. Take the thing with the best priority off the queue. That adds D into the set of vertices for which we know the shortest path. So we remove it, and then we update appropriately. D has an edge back to B. We've already been there. Uh, an edge back to C. We know the shortest path to that. Um, and um, then we have E5. So we're going to check that. So D is current distance is 5 away from A, the shortest path. And then we add this 5, and we get 10. Okay, so 10, we go compare that to the 13 
uh, 10 is less than 13, so we update that with 10, and we're going to attach to the shortest path that we know is in D in order to get that 10. And then K, we can finally update um, with the shortest path, again, from A to D. That's 5 long. And then add 6 for that edge. That's 11. That's certainly better than infinity. And so we get K, 11, um, and it attaches to the shortest path through D. Then we remove E, update the distances. Nothing happens because there's no shorter distance. I won't go through that. And then finally we remove K. So we have this set of shortest paths, which is implicit in here. In the next slide, I'll talk about how to get reconstruct those shortest paths. All right. So most of this slide you've seen already on the last slide. Here's the new stuff down here. And we're going to reconstruct the shortest path by tracing back using the predecessor field, the PRED field. So, for example, I'll just do a couple of examples here. The shortest path from A to K is, the way we get that, is we start with K, and we see that K uh, got its last edge from D. So that means we'll have this edge to be included on its shortest path. Then we go look at D. D, it got to its shortest path, by going through B, okay, so that means we include this edge, and then B, it got its shortest path by connecting directly to A, so that means we got this edge. So that means the shortest path is A to B to D to K. Sorry about this notation here, it's a little messy, um, and but you can see that the length is 11, and that's what we calculated for it, and it comes from 2, 3, 6. Similarly, the shortest path from A to E is, we look at E's predecessor, is D. Okay, so that means we go here. Then D's predecessor, again, is B. So that gets back to here. And then B's predecessor, again, is A. So that means it's just supposed to take this path. That indeed gives us a distance of 10, and that's what we calculated. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you have questions about this, you can see me in class. And if, if you don't have me in class, I guess you can leave them on the uh, site. Thanks.